I'm Vanessa, I'm one of the contributing editors at Book Riot, and we're going to start this week's video with a little story. Once upon a time, there was a 34-year-old Mexican-American woman named Vanessa from San Diego, California, who packed her bags to head to her first ever Winter Institute in Albuquerque, New Mexico. The first four days were fantastic. She attended some really educational breakout sessions, heard some amazing keynotes, mingled with lots of other booksellers, and in general had a swell time. Then at two in the morning on the final night of Winter Institute, she woke up feeling like absolute mother. She had a fever, suffered through one of the worst flights of her life just to get home, finally saw a doctor and was diagnosed with H1N1, otherwise known as swine flu. Oh my gosh, I feel like the most broken of broken records. I have been sick since like, what, 1975? <laughs> I ended up getting H1N1. I don't know when I got it or where or how. Feeling sick in general is just awful but then add to that you know seclusion no exposure to sunlight and just basically quarantining yourself from human contact things got real dark around day four please find a good home for my books i just just let me into the good place 34 years is, is good it's an even number I've, I've lived some good life i've seen some things all of my you know usual insistence on like naturopathic and like homeopathic wellness just went what? What you, there's no FDA approval on the drug? No, that's okay, I'll take it. Give it. I was, I was pumped with like every like steroid, antibiotic, and inhaler. I didn't work for a whole week, which is really great when you're a bookseller and a freelance writer. I'm finally on the mend and I thought I would focus on happier times today and talk to you about some of the titles that I nabbed at Winter Institute. One of the coolest parts about being at Winter Institute is you get access to this galley room, which is exactly what it sounds like. You go in there and get to just, you know, take your pick of all these fantastic forthcoming titles from all these amazing publishers, and then you get to ship them home, or in my case, to the bookstore. So the only bummer is that I don't have a lot of these copies of these books physically in my hand because they're still in the process of being shipped, but I did write a couple of the ones that I am the most excited about down, thought I would share some of my books that I'm looking forward to reading this spring. First one is Bloodleaf by Crystal Smith, which I found out much like some of the other titles I'm going to talk about during something called Rep Picks Speed Dating. <laughs> so uh, when you attend Winter Institute, you are assigned these specific tables for the breakfasts and the lunches. And during the lunches, the speed dating thing happens wherein, you know, you are sitting at your assigned table and after you've had lunch, publishers all come in and do like a quick 10 minute pitch on the titles that they've got coming out this spring that they think you should be the most excited about. This was one of those titles. It's about this girl named Aurelia, who is the first princess, I think, to be born in her, in her particular bloodline in like 200 years. Uh, but the crown she's attached to is a difficult one because people inherently sort of hate her, um, mainly because she practices and possesses this unique ability to do blood magic, which everyone's really afraid of. An assassination attempt is made on her life, which she narrowly escapes, uh, but she ends up escaping it by essentially pretending to be a commoner and blending into the background, abandoning her crown. She's getting a little comfortable with this life because she realizes there's a lot of freedom in no longer having to be beholden to this crown. She gets to hone her magic and sort of perfect it. She finds out though through these ghosts that she sees that there's a nefarious plot happening out in the world that only she has the ability to unravel. So she has a difficult choice to make. Does she continue to sort of live the life she's living that comes with the freedom of being able to pretend that you're not who you really are? knowing that she is the only person that has the power to like undo these awful things that are happening or does she step into her role and yes sort of save the day but at great personal cost and by putting herself in some pretty imminent danger it is the first in a trilogy apparently it is a retelling of the goose girl story from the brothers Grimm. okay i won't lie to you and pretend like i know what that story is but this sounds really engaging and beautiful and fantastical and dark and yeah can't wait to read it Second title I want to talk about that I'm super excited about is Don't Date Rosa Santos by Nina Moreno, which I just have all of the like <laughs> Latinx love for. I love that I'm finally getting to see Latinx representation in so many different genres of books. It's about a young girl named Rosa Santos who She's Cuban American. She's she's pulled apart by lots of different aspects of her identity. She's from this like small Floridian town that really has a lot of curiosity for learning more about the island, about Cuba. 
her grandmother is a Cuban exile and doesn't want to talk about Cuba. She wants to move past that, you know, portion of her life. Her mother, Rosa's mother, is sort of like this reckless artist who bangs in and out of Rosa's life kind of whenever she feels. She's got a complicated relationship with both of these very important women in her life. There is a love story that ensues when she quite literally runs like smack into this boy from the neighborhood who's himself shrouded in a bit of mystery. She was really jazzed about the fact that she was finally going to get to study abroad in Cuba, but then changes to the political climate sort of eliminate that as an option and she's feeling all kinds of ways about that. So again, love story and exploration of identity, kind of coming of age story, these amazing descriptions of these, you know, small like little streets in this Florid Floridian town, you know, old men playing dominoes and like the way she, that she describes Cuban pastelitos, it's like the smells and the sounds are all just leaping off the page. And ah, there's just seems like so much to love here. I saw it pitched as I think Gilmore Girls meets to all the boys I've loved before and I'm like, I'm yeah. I probably don't have to tell you about this next one, but I'm gonna anyway, because oh, I'm so jazzed. And that is With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo, winner of all the awards, haver of the pop and curls. <laughs> She's just so stunning. About a girl named Emily, Emily Santiago, who was a teen mom. She had a baby in her freshman year of high school, but it's not a story that is, you know, bogged down in her single momdom. Um, not that there would be anything wrong with that kind of narrative, but it's very much about a girl kind of dealing with her life choices and getting stuff done. <laughs> you know, she knows that she needs to provide for her child. She's helping to support her abuela. And the one place though, where she can sort of relinquish a little bit of this like tough girl persona and having to live up to all these expectations or responsibilities is in the kitchen where a girl has just like these mad skills with food. She is starting to toy with the idea of like, yeah, what would it be like to do this professionally, to be a chef? So she's clearly got this affinity for cooking, but sort of writes it off and doesn't believe that pipe dreams should be pursued because they're nearly impossible to achieve. She soon learns though that certain talents can't be quelled and that there comes a point where you have to just sort of trust your instinct and your ability and believe that you know you were meant for a particular purpose. These are the types of books that I would have flocked to when I was younger but that I am just as pleased to you know take on now. Yeah and let's be honest we all want to read whatever the heck Elizabeth Acevedo is writing these days. <laughs> Last one that I'm really excited about is The Satapur Moonstone by Sujata Masi. I love me a cozy mystery. I loved Widows of Malabar Hill which was the first of the Praveen mystery books. Again, I'm a huge lover of cozies. I always have been. I like will at some point probably tattoo an Agatha Christie something on my body. But so much of cozy mystery is set in these like remote little British villages or in like a pie shop or a bookstore. And that's great, but they're often super white. The beauty of books like Widows of Malabar Hills, we're finally getting to see persons of color in cozy mysteries. And this particular mystery, um, series of books features the scene a woman named Praveen who is the only and first female lawyer in 1920s India. She's feminist, she's smart, she's capable and in this follow-up to Widows of Malabar Hill we meet a family living in this like rural mountainous estate of India called Satapur and this family has fallen on some hard times. <laughs> the Maharaja has recently fallen to like a very sudden illness that killed him his son just before that died in a really tragic accident. A young crown prince is left behind as are the dowager queen and her daughter-in-law. And they are having, you know, some, some, some bickering and some arguments over how to raise the young crown prince and about the execution of the estate. Things are complicated by the fact that the women are practicing Muslims and they observe the purda tradition, which I hope I'm pronouncing correctly, um, but it's a tradition in which the men and women do not interact. And I mean, when they do, it is behind like a very uh, particular, I think it's called a jolly, a screen in the home, but they're not allowed to have like face-to-face -face contact. Again, that is super difficult when you require a solicitor, a lawyer, and lawyers are all dudes, except in comes Praveen to save the day because again she's the only female solicitor out there and she believes she can come in and try to help this family. When she arrives though she realizes that things may not be what they seem. There's some really interesting power plays and dynamics and some 
stuff going on in mystery in zoos. So excited about these four titles. There are plenty of others. I may have blacked out for a second when I was in that galley room, but these are just four of the ones that I remember giving me like really instant and fantastic joy. Feel free to share some of the titles that you are excited about reading this spring or tell me if you've got these particular ones on your radar already. So, so, so many great titles coming out this year and it's only February, but let's be honest, we deserve it because January was long AF. <laughs> Thanks for your patience with my ongoing medical sagas. Hopefully all of that is in the past now. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next week.